Worship Center Kids Sunday. I am so glad you are here. Man, you all really look good today. I mean, fantastic. You all are just looking amazing. Okay, okay, I know that I can't really see you, but I'm sure that you guys look good. Oh, 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 and you know that thing that you do, that activity that you practice for? You do such a great job at that. Oh, and you know what else? You know how you wake up every morning and you go about your day being you? You are the best at that. You are just, you're just completely fantastic. You do a better job at that than anybody else. Man, you know, compliments are so nice. Compliments are, are fun. They're, they're good to give, but they're kind of good to get too. You know, words are one way that we show kindness. And kindness is showing God's love to others. Did you realize that by giving someone a compliment, by telling them that they look nice or that they do a great job or that they job well done, that that is a way that you can worship God? It is. We can worship God by loving others, by giving to them, giving something. Now, a lot of times whenever we, we think of that, we always think of money, giving them things that they need. But we can also worship God by loving others. It doesn't cost anything to say a nice word. Or, um, you know, we can also show by giving gifts, spending time with them, even acts of service. We can give high fives from across the room, elbow bumps, foot bumps. We can do that, and that is showing love to others. You know, the Bible is full of scriptures that talks about this. There are even some scriptures in there that are actually commandments from God telling us to do just that. One story is found in the book of Acts in chapter 3, and it starts with Peter and John. Now, these are two of Jesus' disciples, and they were heading to the church to pray. You know, they were Jewish, and Jewish people would go to the temple to pray multiple times a day. Well, while, while they were walking to, a temp, to the temple, a man that had been disabled from birth was sitting by one of the gates. Now, the Bible says that the man was lame. What that means is that he had no use of his legs or his feet. And it says that it had been that way since birth. So he had to be carried everywhere. Every day he was carried to this same spot to go sit and beg for money or food from the people passing by. You see, in Bible times, people with disabilities couldn't work. So they had no way to be able to buy food or clothes or pay for a home. And so they had to sit and beg for what they needed. Today, people with disabilities have more options available to them. So they are able to go out and do things to be able to take care of themselves. But in Bible times, that wasn't the case. When the lame man saw Peter and John, he started begging for money. Peter and John weren't rich. They were on a mission to spread the message of Jesus. So their job wasn't a paying job. They were kind of like that man and had to depend on other people to provide for them. But because the people that they talked to loved what they had to say and believed their message, they took care of Peter and John. So here is this lame man, unable to walk, that is begging Peter and John for money. Peter and John didn't have any. And Peter stopped and he told the man, he said, look at me, look at me, like, hey, I need your attention. I have no money to give you. <laughs> well, that man was like, well, what's the use? Move on then, right? Why even stop and talk to me then? 
If you don't have any money to give me, I, ha I, I can't, I have nothing. The man needed, he had a need for food and he needed money to get that food. Why would Peter even get his hopes up by stopping and talking to him? Peter had something better for him. He had a promise. Peter had a promise. If Peter would have given him money, that would have lasted one meal, maybe two. What Peter had was going to last him the rest of his life. He had a promise and he knew that Jesus could heal and he had Jesus living inside of him. He said to the lame man, get up and walk. Now, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. We just talked about the fact that this man had not been able to walk ever in his life, ever. And Peter, who didn't even know this man, is saying, get up and walk? Hmm, something about that seems a little crazy. But Peter then reached out and grabbed his hand and helped him up. And the Bible says that as he was standing up, that his legs and his ankles were healed and strengthened. Healed and strengthened. He had never used those muscles in his entire life. And if you don't use those muscles, they don't develop. They couldn't have held a grown man up. But the promise that Peter had inside of him was a promise that he shared. He shared that love with that man so that he could get up and walk. And the Bible says he leapt up and he walked from not being able to walk to totally being able to leap and run and dance and boogie. That is a miracle. You know, that man had never been able to use his legs and he went from not being able to use his legs to being completely healed. That is such a cool story. That man truly understood how love can change someone. Peter taking the time to share what he had totally changed that man's life. Not just for a meal, but for forever. Now, God might not use you to heal someone from not being able to walk, but he will definitely use you to maybe heal somebody on the inside. Showing love has the power to change people and really help them when they need it. It shows others that they aren't alone. A lot of times, it's hard to show love. Maybe that, maybe you're mad at someone, or maybe that person was mean to you. Why do we have to be nice? But we don't know what's going on in their life. And we have to show love. By us showing love to them, we could very easily be helping them heal from a situation. And the Bible tells us that if we are showing love to others, that that is a way that we can worship God. It's not always easy, and we have to work extra hard at it. Some days, more than others. Life is hard for people sometimes, and we feel like a drum constantly being hammered on over and over and over again. And those are the times when we need love the most. We should take time to look around for an opportunity to show these love. You know, when we show love to others, we are worshiping God. So I want to show you an example of this. So this is a sponge. Can you see my sponge here? This is a sponge. And this is a person who needs love. As you can tell, my person's pretty empty on love right now. But here is, let's say this is me. This is me and I have love, love to give. So I'm going to try to fill them up with my love. Now let's see. Um... a little bit more. Hold on. Let's see. I use 
used all the love I had. Do you see that? Hmm. Well, that person's life might be a little bit better. But let's say another person comes along and I just poured all my love into this person. Do I have anything left to give? A couple drops, maybe. But you know what's so cool about it? Is the fact that whenever we are worshiping God through giving love to others, we have more than enough love because we have God's love that we can continually pour into others and continually encourage and uplift. And although it might be hard, although that person might reject it at first, you can continue to pour. And once all the love is out of you, you know God will refill you in order for you to be able to continue to show that love. How cool is that? So showing love to others isn't just in our strength. It's not just something that we have to do and then God will reward us. It's definitely something that God will give us more than enough of in our lives to be able to do that. And what a cooler way but to love others. Because if all of us follow that, if all of us decide that we're going to worship God by loving others, then when we find ourselves empty, there will be somebody else who is deciding to worship God and love on you, too, when you need it. Love you guys. Bye.